Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here and I wanted to go over the um, YCS this ha that happened in Germany this past weekend because there's a lot going on. Um, first off, it's a European event, so you already know um, Rika took first place. The classic I know people are still like, man, you know, like European players can't really play against Rika, but like in a format where people are starting to like drop down on hand trap numbers um, and sort of go more into like droplets and like board breakers, I think Rika just wins because they really play well against board breakers. Like I, I think like they can play around board breakers better than they could play around hand traps. Um, and if you only open like a single Ash or single Imperm, um, if, and if they have multiple ways to get Loki, it, it really doesn't do much. So, like that's why I think Rika like made it through this event. I think it's it's like a deck that's like relatively like unexplored in the competitive scene. Um, and you know the other big set of news is that tournaments are back um, now that you know Kashira's main boss monster is gone. Um, you know, no more Macrocosmos, no more walking Macrocosmos. Tierlemans can play the game again. And we're back to milling statues, milling five off the opponent's deck, shufflers. Um, and tournaments are getting a little bit more, like, for the longest time, at least uh, for the past few months, like, people who've, who've been playing tournaments have been probably playing, like, King of the Swamps. They've been, they've still been, like, getting some results. Like, it's not like tournaments was, like, completely dead. Like, you could still play the deck. And probably do something but now they're kind of on like a new wave of like okay we're only gonna focus on getting to like Xyz monsters and stuff and some people are playing like the hell shut all package to make windows some people are playing the um exceed package so like the the destiny hero package so they can get to beatrice more quickly and then beatrice helps them mill um i really like the Bahamut Shark package because like if you mill Nessie you, you, you get to Garua and Garua helps you make Beatrice whereas if you mill Mothman you get to Mud Dragon and Mud Dragon helps you get Bahamut Shark so depending on what you mill you can make um, different kinds of plays that like give you layers of interruption that are really 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 interesting um, I would suggest like if you guys want to learn more about tournaments you guys watch the like top 8 deck profile it, it is like pixelated as fuck but it's it's a really good in it's really good insight into how tier limits could, you know, um, work in a format like this. Um, yeah, and a lot of people swap King of the Swamp for the hero package. Now, some people used to play both, right? Some people used to, used to play, like, King of the Swamp and Destiny Heroes. But I think uh, dropping King of the Swamp because it's a brick in hand after you get the first polymerization is a really good idea. Because first off, like, Grafa and Rukalos, although they're great fusions, it's like... Rukalos is really only used to play around Nib, and if you can get to Bahamut Shark before your fourth summon, like, you're, you don't really need Rukalos, right? Um, and then Grafa is kind of just, like, to discard cards in hand, but, like, that's what the Dangerous do, right? That's what the Dangerous do, and that's why they're also playing, like, card destruction. So, it's a, it's a really interesting, um, time for Telemans, um, and there's, like, no one way to play the deck, like, this just happened to be, like, the most tried and tested, um, way to, to, to play the deck that got, like, the, the best results. Uh, if, if we look more into, like, the top 32 kind of lists, like like this this one right here, uh, they are still playing King of the Swamp, uh, you know, they got the Grafa, the Rukalos, and it's not that this doesn't work, I'm not trying to say, like, you shouldn't play it like this, but um, I just think, like, there's a reason why more people are going a more non-King of the Swamp route. Um, Biss deals for, like, the Mirror Match and for Unchained... Um, Radiant Kaiju, this is the one where, like, I could understand why Tier plays this, because they use it to make Mud Dragon, um, in Grave, but there's a, but I can't agree with giving, like, Unchained a, like, Dark Fiend monster, you know. Um, also, not everyone's playing Fenrir in Cash Tier anymore. You know, you would think Fenrir would be free, because it could search Tier Cash, but, um, milling a Fenrir does nothing for you, so... People want a more hybrid kind of deck where they can mill what they, the cards that like, work the best for them, and they can also um, 
draw the cards as well. So like you can draw a Fenrir, like milling Fenrir does nothing for you. Um, so that's that's how tier limits are kind of being played in this event. And yeah, I mean, the one thing I was a little eh about was like I did like the tier limit side deck. Like I did like the super poly right because you're on Garua and and uh, Mud Dragon. Um, I think Exceed Encore is, like, the only thing that I'm, like, why are you siding so hard against Pearly? You know, like, you could be playing Kaijus. I think, like, I understand that, like, Pearly is, like, uh, one of the decks that you want to make sure that, you know, um, if, if you feel like you don't have a way to play around Nor naturally, then I, I completely understand the Exceed Encore, but, like, and also because it could be searched off of Tactics, I think that's, that's, like, another thing, right? So, they... So they sort of have like the the tactics into like the change of heart or the tactics into the exceed encore if they get Nord once, you know, and you open this tactics, then that's great. I'd rather side in I'd rather have like the three thrust and the one encore than like the three encore and the and the single thrust against Pearly. I think that would be better. Or I think playing Kaiju's like um this guy over here might have been a better play. But or it might be better for a more open format to not dedicate your side to a single matchup. But um, that's that's neither here nor there. That, that's just my two cents. Uh, either way, um, I love how diverse this format is. I love um, even Unchained, like, although it did get like just as many tops in the top table, or nearly just as many tops in the top tables as Tier Elements did. Like, it's kind of funny that Tier Elements is kind of like outshining them right now because they do have a good matchup against Unchained. So it's like Unchained has to sort of like play catch up. It's not like completely in Tier Elements' favor. Like, Unchained can still win a game against Tier Elements. It's just like harder for the Unchained player to like break down a Tier Element um, board because they can only hit certain things to like not let the tournament player get the plus off of it. Flandery is still being in the format because Shifter and Harpy's Featherstorm makes perfect sense. Um, Pure Branded still being around because of Puppet Lock is great. And Manadium being like the like optimal synchro deck, even though like Jack Atlas came out super heavy, is still kind of around. Um, and like Black Wings were even in the feature match. Like Manadium is the synchro deck of the moment. And post Age, Age of Overlord, this deck only gets a little better because now they get like a level six version of Axel Synchro, like a level six Manadium synchro that says special summon a level two tuner, but you're locked into um, synchro summoning for the turn. But that's not even a you know bad thing about Manadium. I don't know how good that card will be for the deck though because they can already like go into Baron and Dispatter and. A bunch of stuff like pretty easily even crimson dragon they could they can make all that in a single turn pretty easily um so i don't know how much the age of overlord support might help them but uh tier limits i was kind of theory crafting because um when the testina deck first came out um it's like they were all aquas and the testina monsters have a card that um mills one of the testinas like once per turn and I think, like, maybe if this new Testina support, Testina support that they announced for Age of Overlord, if any of them are, like, Dark Aquas or anything, then there may be a Testina tier limit deck waiting to happen. But for right now, it's still kind of like, eh, you know, uh, the Testinas are still a little too slow. But if the new support, like, speeds them up, uh, gives them a higher ceiling and stuff, then I think tier limit Testina might actually be a... Uh, a deck worth making. Mikanko was another one, so I did have a replay of Mikanko that I went over, but I didn't upload it yet because I wanted to kind of see the list first, and it's actually kind of cool because, like, in the duel or in the feature match, you see him start with, like, Neo Space Connector, and I thought I was watching, like, Infernoble for a second, and then it's like, you see how well Mikanko can control the game, even against combo decks like Manadium, and people like Triff Gaming are always like, man, you know, you can play around seven, eight, you know, negates with, with Manadium. But, you know, uh, Ohime being able to snatch steal your monster while also, like, protecting its its own front row. Like, this dude had a lightning storm that he could not get the full value out of because Ohime was on field. And um, 
the green one was on field and it had Apo equipped with like a, a, an equip spell, one of them that said it can't be destroyed by card effects. So they couldn't lightning storm the Apo, they had to lightning storm the back row. Which means like now you're trading lightning storm for a bunch of cards that don't really do much, you know? Um you're still not trading the lightning storm for like the the, the two or three negate apo that that dude had on on field and he just could not play through to a through a three negate apro plus the ohime on field to snatch deal a monster which is really kind of it, it's a really crazy deck that like requires like a lot of fin it's a really fun control deck like it's a fun mid-range control deck um, that can like go for access code OTK or it can like sort of play somewhat low to the ground if if it gets like um you know like Ohime on board and like a few equips in in rotation. His like Esold got negated. He still milled like three or four equips just so that he can have them in grave because this wind one this wind equip special summons Makankos from Grave. Like um, once per turn, I, I believe. So it can special summon it itself, and um, it can special summon a Makanko back, and then equip that Makanko with it. So it's like a extender in graveyard. So the fact that you still get to mill a card like this, even if your Esol gets negated, you know, allows you to sort of play through some hand traps, play through some interruption. That I bet that people really don't know how to use um, interruptions against this deck. Like, and then the the warrior that they search off of. Um, Esold is like Roland, and this is kind of like whatever, you know. Um, you, you don't really need to play um, Roland, and I mean, you don't really need to search Roland. It, it's great, but it doesn't really like advance your game state. It's more of just like an extra disruption during your opponent's turn. Uh, and last off, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was this top 64 Virtual World. So Virtual World ended up making it to the top 64 of YCS Dortmund and I believe this might be the same guy who played the feature match against Black Wings because um the the list looks relatively similar. He does still have the rank 6 here and I do cover this feature match as well like um both the I I I'm going to cover the Virtual World versus Black Wing and the Makanko versus um was it Manadium in in top 64 and the fact that this guy even made it to the top tables is like amazing to me because um me and my friend were trying virtual world and he didn't think it was that good for this format but apparently you know the fact that they can mo main multiple skill drains is kind of crazy um access to totem bird in case you know they have an extra nyan nyan and, and like lulu um which is really easy because nyan nyan can just revive itself from grave and if you don't have any other use for lulu at the moment you know um that's not a terrible thing to do also chuche can level manipulate so that's that's kind of cool right um and yeah like i still i kind of like virtual world because they can sort of play without committing resources to the board like they need two cards to start they're kind of like unchained where they need two cards to start they need to Put one, they need to put something on the board, and then they need something in their hand to interact with that card on board, um, to to kind of start their turn. But once they start going, they can kind of keep going. Um, they don't auto lose to shifter. Like they don't mind stuff getting banished. Um, because they kind of want like the monsters to get banished, but they don't want like the the gates to get banished. You know, they don't want um, at least not before they banish the gates themselves to use their effects to like banish to search um or banish to to, to special summon a monster from grave uh or something like that i i know like it, one of this uh zwan Wu's effects is to special summon one from grave um and e telly is kind of weird in this deck because it's not really a starter it's more of an extender it's like you e telly for like nian nian and then you have a name on board to use with like lulu or one of your other um, virtual world monsters. It's like, it doesn't really, it just gets you to a virtual world monster, but it's not like punk where e Telly for a Ziamen equals full combo. In this deck, it's like e Telly for a virtual world just equals like one of two, you know, or two of two, you know, in case you already have the, the monster. The side deck is really simple. There's really nothing crazy here, just a few board breakers, drolls, nibs. Um, the 
one of for <laughs> um, Unchained, which is kind of funny because he, like I don't see any way in his list to really like get this card out of deck. He's kind of just hoping that he top decks it. Um, Change of Heart, which is great against a lot of matchups these days. Uh, Harpy Spider Duster, um, great. And D Barrier, also a great card into like Pearly and Monadium and a few other matchups. So, yeah, I mean, Virtual World's here, baby. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not too sure what else to say. I'd I, I'd love to see like uh, like an actual deck profile to see this guy's reasonings. I tried looking for it on YouTube, I couldn't find it, but I'm glad it's at least here so that we can see um, the, the the full list and kind of judge for ourselves uh, what exactly went on here. So yeah, that was a uh, YCS Dortmund. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about tier limits and um, all this stuff, and what do you think is going to happen post Age of Overlord? I I really like how diverse this format is. Um, I think this is like Yu-Gi-Oh at its best when you see like the pie chart divvied up like this. Uh, and there's still like a lot of decks that like although they were pretty good, like they didn't make like large numbers, right? So like. Not just Dragon Link, uh, but like Labyrinth is is kind of still still around. Vanquish Soul is still around. Branded Synchro is a, is one that a lot of people were like confused about. I heard it made like top sixteen. Is a Branded Synchro list here? Let me see. Dragon Link Branded. Is this Branded Synchro? It kind of looks like it, yeah. Like it looks like triple Quim, triple Cartesia, like maxing out on the Bestials and the Bestial uh, Aluber, which is like confusing at first, but then like you realize like it's like Aluber but like a tuner. I, I mean, it's like I, I think it's counted as Albaz while on field. Um, yeah, it's it's a level four tuner. It's counted as Albaz in field and grave. And then it can take control of dragons your opponent controls uh, by discarding a card. So it can like kind of counterplay some of like the best cards in the format, like Bestial Dispatter and 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 such, because you know it like forces out the interruption while also being a tuner to help you synchro summon for your plays. Searchable off of Bestial Lubelion. There's a lot of things that this card can do. I mean. It's, it, it's a great card, you know, and I think it's really interesting how this branded synchro package has kind of come together. Uh, Gold Sark to banish Mercurier from deck and then to add a, I think it adds a branded, mo a, a, a monster that mentions Fallen of Abbas or Fallen of Abbas itself, I think. So you can possibly search both uh, Quem and Cartesia. By Gold Sarking for Mercurier. That's interesting. And the Branded in White, um, Allure of Darkness, which is something that, <laughs> you know, draw power. That's not something that we see really often in, in a modern Yu Gi Oh! But it makes sense, right? Because um, if you banish Mercurier, you're good. If you banish Albaz, you can just shuffle it back with Lupalion. Um, same thing with like Albion, I think. Yeah, cause I think Albion, the Branded or the, the Shroud of Dragon is treated as um, Albaz when it's banished. I could be wrong. No, it's only Field of Grave, never mind. But still. It's a real interesting list, like, a real interesting concept that they got going on here. So, they, they're basically using, like, the idea of what the branded stuff could do, but without locking themselves into fusions automatically. Um, because sometimes you will just need that Baron. Sometimes you will just need that Dispatter. And I think like this can kind of work. And I really like that they're not playing like the branded synchro that like quick synchro summons. I think like that's, I, I said branded synchro, the, the, the branded trap card that like synchro summons during your opponent's turn. I think that card's ass. I, I'm like, I saw that card and I'm like, cool cool concept but like i don't know also a little surprised at the lack of uh despia lulu Walulif. 
Uh, I, I thought that would be like a staple in a deck like this. Like, they got Borload Furious Dragon. <laughs> um, because I, I, in my mind, that's like the staple that you summon off of Grand Guignol, but I guess not. Um, I wonder what Despia monster he summons off of Grand Guignol. Because it, it can't be a Luber. <laughs> not uh, not Bistia. Um, yeah, no, no. I, I said Despian, right? Yeah, I did say Despian monster. I think you just summon Quem off of Grand Guignol because it counts as a Despia and a Dogmatica. If I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. I mean cool ass fucking deck and again so you see encore in a deck like this makes a little more sense um although i'm still a little surprised at the lack of triple tactics thrust if you're gonna play a card like encore um and i'm not sure what red eye soul does for the deck but uh, seems like a cool tech you know yeah branded synchro well there it is um hope you guys enjoyed this is your boy nature here signing out